here we are under the car if you haven't figured that out already all right this is the part i've been kind of dreading to be honest with you uh we have three things to accomplish one that piece of rubber hose right there has got to go it's old as dirt and twice as brutal uh, and then we're going to remove the hard line the fuel hard line that uh curved bit you see there because we have a replacement part that we're going to put on the car and then once we have that off we will pull the fuel filter out of the bottom of the fuel pump and replace that that comes up we'll have to take off that large nut uh, to accomplish that all right there we go so to change the fuel filter out on this old 472 you're going to need a one and one quarter inch wrench uh, it's a pretty tight squeeze uh, I had a long one and a quarter inch wrench, which I, an old cheap one, that I hacked up with my uh, grinding wheel and uh, put the top part, uh, the open end part there against the fuel pump housing to keep it from rotating. And then I got the, and then I got the closed end portion that I hacked off onto the uh, big nut holding the, uh, the fuel filter so I was able to break it free as you can see the open end part is resting against the pulleys uh, I didn't have to use too much force so I don't think I was any in danger of warping the pulleys at all uh, more concerned about the fuel pump itself really You're putting all that kind of tweaking force on it if I fire this thing up and that fuel pump leaks well so be it we'll just replace it so anyway that's kind of what you deal with when you deal with these old ass cars but uh, I think I'm going to call this my Kent Bergsma wrench. And uh, you, uh, I'll put these up for sale on my website for $1,000 a piece. So let's go get this uh, fuel filter changed out and move on. All right, before we put our new uh, fuel line down inside the motor, we're going to cover up these ends with a little bit of uh, 3M blue painter's tape to keep from getting debris down in our fuel line. Just a handy tip there and, you know, common sense really. We don't want any trash cluttering up all of our work that we've done so far. All right, that's good enough. I got this from Classic Tube and uh, we're gonna find out just how good they are find out how good I am. Let's see if I can't figure out how to snake this thing in here. I may have to take my upper radiator hose off again. Alright, let's shove it way down in there. Let's try that. Yeah, I think that, okay, there we go. That's looking better right there. We're getting there. All right, we got it over here by the carb, so we'll uh, get that vacuum line out of the way there. So uh, I need to get my uh, my large pressure fitting installed there, and then uh, there's our pump right there and the bottom of our line. So I guess I'll do the bottom part first, since I have to lay on my back, and that's very unpleasant. All right, last thing we've got to do here is uh, tighten up the power steering pump. So I'm going to loop those belts over there across the AC compressor and the power steering pump. In order to tighten up the belt on this power steering pump, there is a procedure in the factory service manual that describes how to make this very simple tool. Uh, you have this, uh, I think it's 3 16 or it might be quarter inch bar stock. You drill a couple of holes in it at the, at the proper uh, width apart. I can't recall what it is. It's in the book. And you slip it down inside here, and it lines up with a couple of holes in the solid steel part, or cast iron, I don't know which one it is, of the uh, power steering pump. And you can grab the pump and tighten it like that. You can tighten the belts while you uh, tighten up your bolts, okay? So um, don't ever try to pry on the... On this part, that's the reservoir. It's very thin sheet metal and it will break and you will be buying a new pump. All right, so we're gonna tighten up this power steering pump and then hopefully fire this engine up. All right, I think we're ready to fire this old girl up. 
Uh, we got our power steering pump all tightened up. Got those two belts tightened up. This has the double AC compressor. Man, you know, during all of this uh, work I was doing, the compressor was, you know, tilted down that way and, you know, had the rope on it to keep it out of the way. In retrospect, I probably should have just removed it because I noticed out of the uh, clutch area, it was leaking the oil out of the compressor. This compressor is shot, so our next project, that thing. All right, so let's move on. Uh, we're getting ready to fire this thing up. Uh, we got the carburetor all hooked up. Uh, we got this port capped up. I don't use that one. You'll note here on this car, I removed the early 70s emissions equipment. The anti-dieseling solenoid was bolted here. That's gone. The vacuum lockout for the vacuum advance uh, was located in this general area somewhere. I've removed that. Uh, basically, all that thing did was eliminate vacuum advance in first and second gear. It was an early 70s emissions device, and it is completely useless because it was only put there because they were waiting on catalytic converters in 75, and they knew they were coming in 75. So they, but they had to meet emissions. So they did things to meet emissions, but none of that matters now. So I just removed it. Accelerator cable linkage connected, brakes, transmission modulator valve vacuum, vacuum line going to the air conditioning system. I bought a, I had to go to the parts house and buy a new oil filler cap. I lost mine somewhere. <laughs> so what are you going to do? All right, so uh, the wires are not quite arranged just yet. I'll do that later. I'm going to prime the carburetor with a little bit of gasoline right now and fire this thing up. All right, try to ignore my neighbor's pressure washing and lawn mowing. Uh, sorry about the noise in the background. We're going to prime this carburetor Jonathan W. style and then do a test fire. I did not change the idle speeds for the regular idle or the fast idle, although with the cleaning and all the other stuff going on, I'm sure I'll have to make some adjustments. We'll also do an idle mixture adjustment after the engine gets warmed up. Contact! Well, that was relatively uneventful. All right, I'm not sure what the high idle is uh, set to, but to be honest with you, it sounds about right. I don't think it's quite 2,000. It might be 1,500, 1,600, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, folks, we're going to let this motor warm up, and then we're going to start tuning. All right, we're getting ready to start our testing now and our tuning. So we got the vacuum gauge connected up, and you can see that we're just shy of the green there. So that's we're just shy of 17. That's really not very good. Uh, it needs to be up in the green zone. So I'd like to see that up around 20. Uh, we've got a set. We've got to set our idle mixture, and I've got this little flexible guy right here snake through there to get to the mixture screw. And right here on the old Penske from Sears, we're right at 700 RPM. That's fine for the test. I can tweak the, you know, the, the finished idle later on, but uh, this will be our gauge. So we'll tweak this a quarter turn at a time monitor our vacuum gauge monitor our rpms and we'll get and we'll determine where to set the idle mixture screw so 
you do an idle mixture turn, a quarter of a turn, and you take a look at your vacuum, right? If your vacuum goes down, that's the wrong way. Go back the other way, okay? Uh, and then let it settle down, do a quarter turn, and then let the engine settle down, and then you watch, watch the vacuum increase, okay? Quarter turn, does the vacuum go up? Yeah, okay. Let it settle down for about 30 seconds. Quarter turn again, does the vacuum go up? Yeah, great. Do it, again. do it until the vacuum stops going up. Then you know you're done. Then you're done with this side. Then you move over to the other side, do the same thing. All right, I think we've got it as far as we can take it here, folks. So uh, let me show you what we've got. All right, so as I noted earlier, I've removed all of the early 70s emissions equipment and idle adjustments, vacuum, advance, lockouts, blah, blah, blah. I generally like to keep this engine at 800 RPM. That way when, you're, when you are stopped with your foot on the brake in drive at a red light with the air conditioner on, you can still, it'll drop down to about 600, right? All right, that's the way I like it. So, and if you were to tune this car to the factory precise spec for 71, they in fact have you uh, adjust the idle speed for 600 um, in gear with somebody sitting in the car with a foot on the brake. So really, it's done correctly, but I've just made a, a couple of mod minor modifications to remove uh, the emissions equipment, which this day and age really does nothing. So we're idling at right around 800. And you can see our vacuum is right around 19 and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood. The idle is pretty smooth. Uh, so if we go over to our dwell, now you can see our dwell you see our dwell for an eight cylinder engine is supposed to be 30 for this car and we're we're spot on we're, we're right there we're good to go all right so now i checked the timing already it's um uh, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be eight degrees at 600 i've already done that uh it's actually i've got it set to around nine somewhere in that neighborhood it's an old engine you can add a degree of timing if you want no big deal right and um, our engine seems to be engine seems to be pushing it uh, 20 it's pretty happy right there about 19 and a half or something like that I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how to adjust these idle screws uh, with all this junk in the way right especially the passenger side okay you can put a little stubby plug right here and you can use a pair of needle nose to get down in there and adjust that screw. You put your needle nose down in there like that and just kind of grab it and tweak it. It's really easy. It's a very easy way to get to this screw because this screw is a pain in the butt. Okay, the other screw is very simple. You use a pair of needle nose on it, no big deal. That's pretty solid right there in the middle of the green zone, folks. Another thing I did was I uh, filled this car up with 87 octane pure gas with no ethanol in it. It's actually got about a half a tank of ethanol gas and a half a tank of pure gas. Uh, I'll, have to run, I'll have to run all that out so I can get pure gas in it, really. I went ahead and put a bottle of Lucas Octane Boost in the tank as well since I'm running 87 octane pure gas and this 8.5 to 1 compression engine uh, calls for 91. So I added about I added a, a bottle of Lucas Octane Boost uh, to the gas tank, and I'm telling you what, it's it's liking it. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I've got a pulley. It's making a ch -ch 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 sound. I think it's the compressor pulley. Must it's either that or the water pump, one or the other. I don't know. All right, folks, that's about it for the test and tune of the 472. Hey, listen, I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to hit that little bell down below. That's all for now. Take it easy, everybody.